If you've been following the Berkey Academy Econometrics lecture series, getting quite lengthy now, we've gone through modeling using lines, modeling using curves, and then we talked about the OLS mathematics and residuals, and we have talked about hypothesis testing, we've talked about the Gauss-Markov assumptions, and at this point we're going to go through these assumptions a little bit more in depth and try to take care of some details and try to talk about some things so that you can actually do econometrics. But it, it's going to get a little more complicated as we go. And in this lecture I'm going to start talking about specification. Now there are a few different parts of specification but we're really talking about that Gauss-Markov assumption number one that we talked about earlier where specification means that you have the right functional form is it a curve or a straight line or what kind of curve is it also that you have the correct set of variables and that you have an additive error term and so we're gonna focus on how do you know if you have the right set of variables or not so the main thing that you have to to understand and just accept is that there really is no way to really know what the right set of variables are so that's the first thing I want you to understand there's never any way you can really absolutely know in economics now it might be the case in, that in physics you have a model and you know exactly what the variables that should go in there are and economics and political science, all social sciences, it's always going to be a little bit uncertain. And so how do you figure out what explanatory variables you should use? You have to use a, com a combination of common sense, looking at previous research that people have done. You need to look at what does economic theory suggest the right explanatory variables should be and you also want to let the data talk to you a little bit you need to when you're uncertain don't just throw common sense out the window don't throw common you know uh, previous research out the window or economic theory or, or whatever kind of theory it is that you're that you're working with but you also want to when you're not sure about whether a variable should be included let the data try to help you in that decision so listen to what your data tells you so first thing as I mentioned assumption one of the Gauss Markov theorem assumes that you have the right variables the right functional form and an additive additive error term and in Studentman the textbook I use chapter 7 deals with functional forms but we did that in this lecture series at the very beginning and we'll come back to that a little bit more a little later on as I've mentioned before in these videos, if you put in a, vari a variable that should not be in your equation, that is not a horrible sin. But one of the worst sins is leaving out a variable that should be in there. And that's what we're going to focus on. Why is it not so bad if you put in a variable that shouldn't be there? Uh, and, and why is it um, extremely bad? almost all the time if you omit a variable that should be included. So let's just go through some of these bullet points real quickly and then we'll elaborate in, in some other lectures. Bullet points to know. If you have a model with all the right variables and then you say let's throw in another variable just for fun just to see what happens. What could happen? Well first what will definitely happen is you will lose a degree of freedom. Remember n minus k minus 1. And when n minus k minus 1 decreases ceteris paribus, your standard errors will go up. Second, losing a degree of freedom is also going to raise your t-criticals slightly. If you look at a t-table, you'll see this. So smaller deg degrees of freedom. The t-critical for hypothesis testing is going to go up a little bit. But that's not horrible. You know, neither of these first two are horrible things. C, uh, this variable that you threw in, just at random that you shouldn't have, 
it might be correlated with with some of your other variables and the more your explanatory variables are correlated with each other that increases standard errors as well it increases this uh, imperfect multicollinearity and we'll talk about that a little more later on D the uh, irrelevant variable that you throw in can be at random statistically significant so you throw in something for fun it should not be in the model you don't know that but you're just you're just testing it out and uh, at random it's going to have a t statistic that's high and a p-value that's low say below 0.05 and you'll think wow this random thing is statistically significant and so how often will that happen it depends on your alpha and, and really this gets into the definition of what alpha is if your alpha is five percent that means that you're willing to take a five percent chance of rejecting a null hypothesis just at random and so that means that five percent of the irrelevant variables that you throw in just for fun will appear to be and, and, and will be statistically significant because uh, randomly by random chance the p-values will be less than 0.05 and so that really highlights the idea of what an alpha is so these are the worst things that can happen here uh, are really C and D if you put in a variable that should not be in your model it could increase the standard error of some other important variables and it could affect them in a big way where it increases their p-values quite a bit that's not going to be extremely common but it can happen and D again could could be important that uh, if you throw in a variable that really shouldn't be in the model and suppose you, you know it shouldn't be there but uh, and you you're just convinced that it should not be in the model but you put it in anyway you're taking that 5% chance if your alpha is 0.05 that it will be statistically significant and, and you will say wow I knew that shouldn't have been in there but look the, it's statistically significant and so therefore you get convinced that maybe you should leave it in there so the the, the likelihood of something really bad happening is, is kinda low but it could happen could happen now D this is really the big sin if you leave out a variable that is important it will almost always cause a problem now here's how suppose that in the correct model there are two explanatory variables just to keep things simple let's call them x1 and x2 in the correct model if you include both models the estimates you get will be correct what do I mean by correct I mean the estimates are not going to be identically equal to the true slope that's not what I mean by correct but I mean that on average they will be right so the the estimates you get will sometimes be too high sometimes be too low um, that's what I mean by correct but if you leave out one of the variables let's say you leave out the second variable to, to give us a concrete example here suppose we have horsepower and gas mileage explaining the price of a car but we want to leave out gas mileage of the car or suppose we have to leave it out because we just don't have data on it then what's going to happen is the other variable we leave in horsepower the estimate is going to be biased because the variable we do put in is going to absorb some of that relationship that should have been explained by the gas mileage variable that we left out so again if if we don't use gas mileage to explain the price horsepower is going to suck up some of that explanatory power that should be explained by gas mileage and we're going to uh, think that horsepower has a different relationship with price than it really does now this is not to say that the coefficient for horsepower will be too big it could be too big or it could be too low but it's probably going to be biased which means it's going to be wrong and so go back and look at the uh, Gauss-Markov assumption 
lectures if you need to review what this idea of biased means. But it means that on average, our estimate of the slope for horsepower is going to be wrong. It means we're, we're aiming at the wrong tar target. It's either consistently going to be too low or consistently going to be too, too high. Now if it's going to be consistently too high, we say that our estimate has a positive bias. It's above, positive, above what the estimate should be most of the time. Or it could have a negative bias, which means that our estimates are consistently on the low end, below what the real slope should be. And there's this little formula for working out what the um, bias will be. The bias is the product of the slope of the variable b2 that we leave out and this alpha 1 is normally what we call it that's the relationship between the variable we left in and the variable we dropped and we'll talk about this, this a little in another lecture. 